to uh, work with us and walk through uh, with Gilson. Uh, my name is Jeff Polgier. I'm the area sales manager uh, for the Midwest region of the United States and I uh, reside in Cincinnati, Ohio. Dave Valera is our product segment manager for the Signet portfolio, and he resides in Irvine, California. Uh, what you're looking at here is the 42nd edition of our Signet instrumentation catalog. Uh, if anyone would care for one of these, by all means, please type it into the chat and I will see that one gets delivered to you. Be happy to do that for you. But no further ado, we'll go right ahead into uh, uh, the Signet portfolio. Signet has uh, uh, a number of various in instrumentations, including the uh, flow sensors, that, which is our focus today. We have uh, uh, paddle wheel flow sensors, a mechanical device, inline low flow devices, as well as magnetic flow meters. Also along with the, uh, the Signet brand, we have our analytical products, including pH, ORP, conductivity, resistivity, um, and then we also have temperature, pressure, and level devices, along with uh, drinking water quality devices offered as the uh, part of the portfolio as well. So within that, we'll go into our paddle wheel offerings. Uh, we have uh, the uh, majority of what we sell. There are the plastic style uh, uh, rotor mechanical units, paddle wheels here on the right. Um, those are utilized mainly in clean water and chemical applications. And you also have a metallic version of that for a higher temperature, higher pressure uh, rated uh, flow sensing. And that would be uh, the units here on the left, the Metal X unit, the 2540 there on the left, um, and then <clears throat> back to the, uh, the flow sensors on the right as well. We'll break down each one as we go here. So within that, we also have uh, magnetic flow meters, insertion style. Uh, the, uh, we have, you can get those as a blind device with a frequency out or with a display on it as uh, shown here in the middle. And then you can also incorporate one of our 9900 transmitters as an integral mount uh, to uh, your uh, magnetic flow sensor. You can also do that with a paddle wheel for that matter. Within that, we've got the, uh, the 515 Rotorex uh, paddle wheel. It is a self-powered unit uh, because it is a self-powered unit. You're not going to want to use this for uh, low turn down, low flow velocity applications. We also have the 8150, a battery battery operated uh, paddle wheel. For those lower flow uh, sensing devices that you need, uh, we have the 2536 available as well. This is a powered device. And then we also have the uh, 2537 uh, blind electronics paddle wheel unit as well. Within that, on the magnetic flow meters, you have the options to be have, to have a blind unit, a display unit, or the uh, the metal uh, stainless steel <clears throat> mag meters for larger diameter pipings, which is our 2552 shown here. You can also get that as a hot tap version. Within that, the hot tap version, excuse me, the uh, hot tap version comes with a uh, you insert a ball valve in line with a bubble let, and then you adjust the height of the 2552 as needed in the field. On the low flow or inline flow sensing devices, this is for low chemical dosing, et cetera. These units are uh, the turbine flow unit and the mini flow are uh, PVDF in construction, where the, uh, the micro flow is a Riton uh, device, Riton material construction. So therefore you, you utilize these for uh, dosing of uh, various chemicals. On, this, on the 515, it is a self-powered device, so you only get a 20 to 1 turn down. So with that, um, it being a, uh, uh, it is chemically, you want to choose it for chemical compatibility, as well as the line size that you have. As you can see, you've got three sizes to choose from. Uh, it is a bi-directional flow sensing device. The unit comes with a 25-foot cable. And uh, one thing that is important when you're using a insertion flow sensor, you will need to buy a Signet installation fitting. And I'll get into the reasoning for that here in just a bit. So with that, the 515 can be used as a, in a wet tap application. So how that works is you're working uh, with a 3519 wet tap assembly. That basically has a support uh, flange and a PVC ball valve in line here that allows you to be able to shut off the flow and keep the, uh, or shut off the device Pull the device from the uh, uh, from the pipe and keep the uh, 
the system uh, how, uh, uh, filled. <clears throat> The 8150 battery operated sensor, this is a really uh, uh, effective device for when you have really no uh, manner in which to uh, get power out to uh, where you need your flow data taken from. So this works with a uh, lithium ion uh, battery. Uh, nominal uh, battery life is about four years. It does have the, uh, uh, will, it does not have that large turndown, so you would only get the 20 to one turndown because it is a uh, comes with a self-powered 515 uh, flow sensor uh, with this unit. <clears throat> so again, just two set, uh, two sizes. You'll need a flow a signet flow installation fitting along with this as well. The 2536 are uh, low flow paddle wheel sensor. You can see you get that 66 to one turndown. So you can go to a flow velocity of 0 0.3 feet per second and still get good flow data. It is a 24 volt device and uh, you know, uh, bi-directional flowing, et cetera. You can also do this in the uh, same uh, wet tap assembly as we spoke of for the 515, just utilizing the 3519 assembly there as well. The 2537 paddle wheel flow sensor. Uh, <clears throat> this is a nice uh, simple device that, that uh, uh, it is a power device, so 24 volt power. You can use it as a flow switch or you can utilize it to output our S3L, uh, digital output language. S3L uh, is the Signet digital flow uh, communication means, or you can just get a simple four to 20 output from it. Again, all these will come uh, with your choice of uh, chemical compatibilities. You can find a chemical compatibility chart on the George Fisher site to be able to give you an idea of what uh, is, works best with your uh, or which choice of uh, materials you should choose from. The 2540, this is an adjustable device. No flow sent, no uh, signet uh, installation fitting is needed for this because the uh, installation means is variable. You, uh, you install that into a pipe with a uh, inch and a half uh, F, uh, saddle or a threadlet, and then you uh, calculate due to the size of the pipe how deep that unit actually gets inserted into the flow stream. The 2540 can also be done in a hot tap version uh, with that larger diameter pipes. Again, what you're basically using is a uh, <clears throat> uh, a, a valve with a close nipple and a full port ball valve. The, 20, the 525 Metal X powered uh, flow sensor. I see these a lot in uh, steel mills um, and just some really nasty application where high temperatures and higher pressures are needed for a self-powered device. So again, you're not gonna get the low turndown with the, utilizing this unit because it is self-powered, uh, but you do and can utilize this in those higher temperatures and higher pressure uh, sensing means. It does come along with its own special uh, flow uh, fitting, but again, that's part of the portfolio of what you have to choose from. The insertion flat uh, mag meters. Again, you've got a blind or the two display models, bi-directional flow. Um, what's nice about a, uh, a mag meter versus a mechanical device is you can, it can manage suspended solids in your, uh, in your weight, in your uh, uh, process fluid. Whereas the a mechanical device is going to tend to clog and become problematic over time if you're managing any kind of suspended solids. So basically a rule of thumb is you look at a uh, paddle wheel unit as clean fluids, clean chemicals, where uh, you get any kind of suspended solids, then you migrate to a, uh, uh, a mag meter. A number of those uh, variety of different choices that you have for installation fittings. The key here is this PVDF insert piece. That allows, per the pipe size, the flow sensor to actually fit and nestle into that uh, uh, PVDF fitting and get to the proper insertion depth. That insertion depth needs to be 10 to 12% of your pipe diameter. <clears throat> and that's what the fitting will do for you. It will get you to that exact fitting or that exact, exact insertion depth. You can get these in, uh, 
materials from PolyPro, PVDF, brass, stainless steel, um, et cetera. The 2552, one of my favorite uh, sensing devices from Pigment, uh, larger diameter pipes. Uh, you can get it in a four to 20 uh, uh, unit, or you can use it as an open collector output to a, uh, a local display, one of our uh, series of transmitters that we offer from George Fisher Signet. Bi-directional flow sensing as well. You can use this, uh, even though it is stainless steel, you can use it on metal pipe as well as plastic piping. The one key thing here, I'll, I guess I need to probably put, put a point out, in con, uh, comparison to a mechanical device, there are no moving parts on a, on a mag meter, therefore you don't have that means of wearing out of a, a pin, of a rotor, et cetera. So you have that uh, more of a stable means of flow sensing. And then also to that, because of the electronics of the, of the device, it is more accurate than a, your traditional paddle wheel sensors. Here in line, here's, here's a look at that hot tap assembly. So you, what you've got is you've got that ball valve installed. So you can retract the 2552 out of the pipe. At that point, you close the ball valve and now you're able to pull the 2552 from the, uh, uh, the, the pipe in the process and therefore allowing you to clean that off keep the, uh, the pipe full and uh, move forward. You, you do get the, uh, the uh, considerable uh, large turndown with the, uh, uh, the 2552 as well. Some of the meat of the matter when it comes to uh, uh, choosing a insertion style uh, flow sensor. It's uh, imperative that you get a fully developed turbulent flow. That's really where you're gonna to wanna to go. A laminar flow is gonna have a lot of drag on the side of the pipe or viscous fluids, et cetera, um, where a disturbed flow is basically the flow that's coming off of a, maybe upstream as a valve, a 90, et cetera. What that's doing, that's creating eddies in the flow, flow stream. At that point, that our devices need uh, to be placed away from those uh, disturbances. And then ultimately what we're looking for again is that fully developed turbulent flow. This really comes down to that whole idea of having the proper pipe runs as well as being away from those obstructions up and downstream from the uh, flow sensor. Here you got an idea, you got a nice shot of what those uh, up and downstream pipe diameters need to be. Uh, so for straight runs, you know, you're looking at 10 and five, uh, but if you start adding in elbows, uh, <clears throat> elbows, pumps, valves, et cetera, you can see it really increases quite quickly. So if you've got a valve upstream, because of the uh, uh, what's taking place through that valve when you open it and close it or throttle it, um, you need to be 50 pipe diameters away from that flow sensor. And then the positioning of the pipe. This, uh, it, it's variable in the sense that uh, a paddle wheel is going to uh, uh, be a little different than a, uh, a mag meter. A mag meter does not like um, the air bubbles that get entrained on a pipe. And that air, whenever you would uh, see that in a pipe, it's gonna run along the top of that pipe. A paddle wheel can manage the air bubbles in a, uh, a an application better than the, uh, a mag meter because the mag meter sees that those air bubbles is non-conductive uh, product passing by it. Therefore, it's going to give you an erroneous reading if that unit's installed at the 12 o'clock position. So six o'clock position, definitely not a good idea. We got sediment buildup in a pipe and that becomes problematic. On a uh, installation at the three o'clock position for a paddle wheel, not recommended due to the mechanical means and the drag on the uh, pin and rotor. <clears throat> Key thing to, uh, with all flow sensors, that is, is a is the K factor. K factor is the number of pulses generated by the by the sensor for each unit of uh, liquid that passes the sensor, whether it's liters, gallons, etc. Um, so that is a calculated number per the 
schedule of pipe, material of the pipe, as well as the diameter of the pipe. So you can see the variety of different uh, uh, K factors chosen per unit. That K factor also changes per uh, how, which unit you've chosen, whether it's a 515 paddle wheel or a 2536 because of the dynamics of, of the way that those units function, uh, the, the K factor changes accordingly. <clears throat> Again, pipe size and material, those are the things that are you know, coming into, uh, into factor here. Uh, the K factor per your installation or per your flow sensor will be located in the manual that will come with the unit. The K factor can be entered into a local transmitter, such as a 9900, or that uh, K factor can be inst uh, installed for a direct uh, connection to a PLC as well. One thing to keep in mind, your K factor is uh, based on water. So if you do have a viscous or something that's got a little different specific gravity, uh, you're going to want to do a uh, rate calibration or a volumetric calibration on site to be able to adjust your K factor accordingly. The paddle wheel, again, you're looking at a, a mechanical device. You have the rotor and pin that's actually, you know, moving down here at the, at the base. It is, it is a something that can be, can wear. So um, the two varieties that I, I mentioned earlier, you've got the, pad, the 515 paddle wheel with the coil and no external power. So as the magnets pass by, uh, you're creating a uh, frequency and therefore creating that output of a, a sinusoidal output to our flow device or our flow transmitter, pardon me. The power device now works, it also has magnets embedded, but it works in a square wave transistor style. Uh, it's uh, give you a square wave frequency output from the uh, from the unit. And again, because it is a power device in the 2536, you're able to capture those lower end flow rates. So here you got a good idea. So as you're going slow, you got a, a nice smooth uh, sinusoidal uh, flow rate. As that picks up, you see that uh, increased uh, amplitude and voltage that uh, shows the increased flow rate. Where the transistor style, uh, excuse me, where again, uh, slower, the slower the flow frequency, the, the slower the flow rate. As that uh, picks up, you get those square waves that are a little closely, you know, more closely bunched and gives you a higher velocity. Here in, uh, on the right, you see one of our 9900 local transmitters. So that gives you a local display. <clears throat> so you're going to take that. Uh, as the, as the liquid passes the paddle wheel, the signal is generated. It passes, it then sends that, uh, uh, the, the, the frequency generated is directly proportional to the fluid's velocity. The local readout then put the K factor in, and now you've got a good installation. So at the back of the transmitter, you're going to get a rate, uh, a flow rate displayed, as well as the totalization of that flow, uh, you get a permanent totalizer as well as a, uh, uh, a resettable totalizer. Some of the theory behind uh, what the difference is uh, for a magnetor, the magnetor is actually working off of Faraday's law where a magnetic field is induced into the, uh, uh, into the pipe via two electrodes on the end of the sensor tip. Those electrodes create that magnetic field. They're picking up any kind of conductive fluid. So when I say conductive fluid, anything greater than 20 microfluids. It, as that passes by the metallic pins, it distorts the <coughs> uh, device, and then that distortion is converted to a voltage and then frequency, and which is then that is proportional to the flow rate. Again, those sensors, uh, the sensor tips. You can get those in various uh, means of, uh, of uh, materials construction, whether it's titanium, stainless steel, uh, et cetera. So back to the, uh, the paddle wheels for installation tips. 
again, imperative that you have that up and downstream pipe diameters. This also goes for um, you know, a mag meter as well. It's a little bit more onerous when you're looking at a paddle wheel just due to the mechanical nature of the, of the sensor. And uh, so back to that idea of the installation fitting. It is imperative that you have a signet installation fitting so that you get to the proper insertion depth. You're basically getting to that sweet spot of where that flow can be uh, read properly by one of our devices. And what we look at is 10 to 12 percent of the ID of the pipe. Now a little bit different here on the 2540 because it is an adjustable unit, it rides on these uh, rails here and then you uh, via this calculation you're able to then get it to the proper depth where the uh, the fitting itself is an uh, inch and a half uh, MPT that just screws into the pipe and allows you to be able to set that unit. And then you run the calculation to be able to get it to the proper insertion depth. Again, with the idea of the mounting angles, 12 o'clock is acceptable. Uh, but again, uh, it becomes that the 12 o'clock position is problematic for a mag meter due to the air entrainment that you might uh, in encounter in a uh, installation. Same idea for the uh, mag meter installation. Use the uh, signet installation fitting to get that unit to 10 to 12 percent of the uh, proper depth. It's a little bit more variable when it comes to the installation orientation of your uh, insertion mag meter. So you have the there's actually you know eight eight positions possible, but the top and bottom of the pipe for a mag meter are definitely not recommended. Top of the pipe, you got that air entrainment. Bottom of the pipe, you've got uh, sediment that could build up. One of the things that works definitely in direct concert with our uh, transmitter, or excuse me, our flow sensors would be our transmitter line. We have a number of different transmitters that we can choose from. We have the 9950 dual panel where you can take two sensor inputs into this unit. It is a multi-parameter unit, so it doesn't have to be flow. It can be pH, ORP, conductivity, et cetera. The 9900 is a single channel. So if you just have a single one, a single uh, sensor, and you want to bring back and have local readout, you choose either the field mount or panel mount uh, 9900. The 8900, it's more of a workhorse uh, unit. I see this uh, where you actually can do six inputs in and four, you get four inputs out. And then we also have a our 8150 field and panel flow fertilizer. Uh, down here at the bottom, as you can see. So within that, the uh, um, the idea behind that single channel 9900 flow transmitter, uh, it is also for its multi-parameter, so therefore it can take the signals into uh, from any of these a variety of different uh, sensors. Uh, we can do a 4 to 20 milliamp signal in but it has to go through one of our IGO devices, which converts to our S3L uh, digital input. Some of the mounting means for our 9900s, you got another, you know, another a number of choices. So you can do a panel mount. We also have this uh, hinged cover that you can utilize to be able to install a panel mount unit. We have the universal mount, which comes with a universal, or you'd have to purchase the universal mount kit as well. These are 24 volt devices, um, as well as uh, a multi-parameter unit. We have recently added Modbus to uh, the communications protocol. Some of the indicators, what's nice on the 9900, you get this nice range band to kind of give you a visual of what the uh, general range is of your, uh, uh, of your application. You get the flow rate here. The uh, menus to be able to go from uh, uh, the cal to the options to, to check your relays to set the unit up are very easy to traverse uh, and uh, as a matter of fact uh, Gilson has a really nice uh, 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 video of this on their website done by Ryan Gilson he did a real nice job with that what the, the 9900 is a modular device so you have the means of being able to add uh, the, the base unit comes as is and then you can add a uh, conductivity resistivity module for an additional four to 20 module, Modbus modules, um, all in the real estate here in the back. 
You also have the means to be able to do a heart comp, uh, heart protocol communication module, um, as well as a, a module for relays. Here you can see the relays there. So two uh, hard contact relays, 250 uh, VAC with uh, five amps. So you can drive a, a pump, uh, you know, power a valve, uh, open or closed, et cetera. The additional 4 to 20 module um, kind of give you that, say if you were working with a pH application and you had temperature as one of the variables that's being read from the sensor, you would be able to output that utilizing the additional 4 to 20 module as well. Uh, one thing, uh, for each channel of our transmitters, each it is assigned a uh, 4 to 20 output. So for the 9950, the dual channel unit, it automatically comes with two 4 to 20 outputs, where the 9900 comes with a single 4 to 20 output along with a open collector output. <clears throat> so here is uh, one uh, uh, evolution of the 9900. It's our batch module. So it's a, um, a batching means to be able to give you, um, you know, 10 different recipes. And the unit comes along with the batch module here. And then there's also oh. a, uh, the relays. The Jeff, hard I don't see that on the screen. What's that? Oh, there we go. I didn't see the batch controller on the screen. Oh, OK. I, now, yeah. I, now I see it. Very good, I sir. think it's a little out of sync. <laughs> Okay. Um, so with that, the, the batch controller, same idea. It's a 9900 platform. It works in concert with our flow sensor. So it's a flow sensing device that's uh, able to give a means of batching to a, uh, for simple control uh, locally uh, from, a, say, a small tank farm. So here you get that, that nice shot of what the batch module comes with. The, or you get the batch module, you also get the relay uh, as part of the system when you buy a 9900 1BC. And obviously you're gonna be working in uh, concert with a flow sensor as your input. So the 8150 battery powered flow totalizer, uh, there's a number of ways that you can build this unit out. Again, it's got a four year uh, roughly uh, uh, Lifespan for the uh, the battery, uh, three different totalizers, two resettable and one uh, permanent. You can do a, an integral setup to where the flow sensor is close coupled to a uh, 8150 transmitter, or you can do a field mount or a panel mount installation as well. Now these units here, they're uh, they're also utilizing the 515 or the 525 metal X. Again, those units are self-powered and therefore you're not gonna get that low end turn down. The 9950, you've seen this, uh, a similar uh, slide of, as to this for our 9900. The 9950 is the same platform, only it is a dual channel unit. So you can take two, uh, your selection of, of sensors into the unit for a 9950. 9950, because it is one of the newer models, you, you have the choice of AC and DC power. Um, it is still a quarter din panel mount uh, unit. You do have a red indicator light that can be used as a fault or um, an enunciator or a local readout. And then again, two current loop uh, output standards, so two four to 20. On the, the optional relays for the 9950, you have your choice of four mechanicals, two, two mechanicals, two solid state, uh, or two mechanical and four binary. So you can really mix it up and utilize the 9950 for uh, a lot of your control needs. The 8900, again, six imp, up to six inputs in, but you only get four outputs or four uh, analog, four to 20 outputs from this unit. So with the, uh, the multi-parameter unit, the, uh, with the passive outputs, um, you have the means of being able to send that back to a chart recorder, a PLC, control a pump, et cetera. So there's you know, 
a variety of different uh, manners in which to utilize the uh, outputs to be able to do control. And we also have an active uh, output on only on the 8900 itself. The open collector switch, basically a solid state relay, um, you know, very simple uh, output, but that is also a means uh, that you have available. When you're selecting a uh, insertion flow sensor, what are the uh, what are the parameters? What do you need to really be uh, mindful of? Uh, so a lot of times you're going to need to know obviously what the process fluid is, what your general flow rate is. So if you need that large turn down. Uh, you're going to want to you know, choose one sensor over another. The installation requirements, so you got your pipe size, pipe material, pipe schedule, etc. The chemical compatibility, again, you can run those numbers. You can just give us what, uh, what chemicals you have, and I can run those numbers for you, or you can do it right on the George Fisher website. And obviously, temperature and pressure are also uh, key elements here. And then uh, also your performance requirements, you know, what kind of accuracy you're looking for. Um, you're gonna get less accuracy from a paddle wheel than you would from a, uh, uh, a flow sensor, uh, or excuse me, a mag meter. So keep that in mind as far as, you know, is 1% uh, what you're looking for is 2%, um, et cetera. And then uh, the key thing too, this is gonna uh, steer you whether it's from a mag meter to a paddle wheel. If you have particulates in the fluid, you're definitely not going to want to utilize a paddle wheel flow sensor. And viscosities of fluids is also a, a concern. All of our K factors, again, are calculated off of uh, water. Um, so viscous fluids can be a little bit of a challenge for us, but if you do have that, uh, <clears throat> the means of, 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 of measuring a viscous fluid, please let us know. We'll have to uh, review the application. And Reynolds numbers for again those non-water fluids. So some of the uh, <clears throat> you have to choose your flow sensor. So now you're going to go. You're going to you need a you need a powered flow. Uh, uh, what is your vo you know volume of flow, etc. Um, you know so that you make that selection of uh, what unit you're looking for. So all these on top here. These are the uh, selection of insertion flow sensors. Uh, we just recently came out with a uh, insertion or a full bore mag meter as well, where the accuracies are uh, improved to 1%. And you only have three and two pipe diameters up and downstream to be able to utilize that unit. Then you would move on to the installation fitting. Again, your, your material construction of what uh, pipe, what's your piping system? Is it PVC, CPVC, brass, uh, stainless steel, et cetera? And uh, the, uh, in the Cigna catalog, as well as Gilson, can assist you on selecting the proper uh, installation fitting. The next step would be which transmitter? Do you need local uh, readout? Where do you want uh, the output of your flow device to go to? Do you want local readout? If so, you got the 9950 for two, dual channel, 9900 single, and the others <clears throat> to choose from as well. That's what I have for you today. Is uh, were there any questions uh, in regard to uh, what we just went through? Yeah, we had a couple of questions come through, Jeff. The uh, first one is: Can you program timing into the battery unit to shut it off if you know you're only going to run flow during certain times to save battery life, or program a sleep period? David, I have to defer. Sure. Uh, the answer, to unfortunately, is no. Um, you do get a fairly significant life out of the batteries. They usually last about four years minimum. Uh, they're very easy to replace. They're basically a double A size lithium battery that we supply as well as, you know, being a standard size, you can pretty much procure from anywhere. Okay. Uh, the next question is, do you have anything that would measure steam flow in a 20 inch pipe, a thousand degrees F, 800 PSI with hop tap insertion? Um, okay, no. so well, well, yeah, for something like that, uh, 
the, the, the best thing we have for, for that is not a hot tap. Hot taps kind of add a little bit of danger to it. And uh, we don't have, we, we play more in the plastics game. So the closest thing we have to that would be our 525, but uh, it has a limited temperature range of 300 degrees F. It'll uh, attack the, the coils inside the, the unit at above 300 degrees. Uh, pressure wise, we can handle 1500. And, and the limited range on that as far as pipe size is up to 12 inch. So unfortunately not on that uh, particular option. Okay. Yeah, maybe another option might be a, a thermal device. I know that uh, Gilson being the applications guys that you are, um, maybe that would be something you could take off on. You, you... Okay. I, I believe that Ryan Dean and, and uh, the gentleman that asked that question are going to talk about that offline. I'd just like to point out that uh, uh, 800 PSI line with an insertion is uh, really asking for trouble. Um, I agree. The amount of pressure behind there and the, and the ability to launch that thing is a, a major league uh, safety precaution, and we wouldn't want to do anything insertion style that way. I agree. Uh, next question is, do you have any applications that will work for gravity sewer lateral? Gravity sewer lateral. So we, uh, assuming the sewer lateral is not a full pipe, uh, all the Signet products require full pipe. Uh, our velocities we can get pretty down and dirty on uh, I think 0.07 feet per second with our full bore unit is the best, but again, we would require a full pipe to be able to measure accurately. Okay. Uh, next is, are there any options for a totalizer output? Well, it, it um, depends on how you want to collect the information. Uh, the units don't necessarily have a uh, totalizer output, but standard on the 9900 is an open collector output, and you can program that to go in sync with the uh, with the totalizer. Whether you do it, you know, times one unit, times ten, or whatever, you know, for resolution purposes, you can do, and then send that off uh, to a uh, PLC or some kind of SCADA system that can count the the pulses and add them up as your totalizer. That that's one option with no extra charge. The other option would be going to a, um, as Jeff mentioned, a Modbus module. So you get a primary and secondary function out of those. So you can collect the flow data in real time. And then also on that same stream, uh, see the uh, totalizer output. So again, you can pick up those two items off a Modbus module, which would be an optional addition. Uh, we also have on the 9950, uh, don't have the free open collector, but we do have the uh, relay options there. And we also offer a Modbus module that will transmit both channels along with the secondary outputs on that, on that particular system. Okay. Uh, next, next question is, do we have anything that does automatic batching? Um, by automatic, I'm assuming Assuming that uh, it would be set on a timer, normally we don't do something like that. However, on the back of the unit, if there is a, a signal that is sent to it externally, it can actually uh, start a batch. Um, you can even tie uh, batch controllers to, to each other, to other batch controllers. And there's an end of cycle output typically on those that can actually trip the next batch. Um, if I'm not mistaken, you can also do multiple batches on these. Uh, it's something we need to probably follow up on. But yeah, it, to a degree, we can do automatic, but it, 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 it's going to require a command to start the first batch. Okay. Right. Why don't you explain a little bit on on what you've done on the on the batching with the uh, automated valves? Uh, you're talking about, uh, so typically on these, you do have an, an external, or excuse me, an end of batch cycle that you can utilize uh, that is basically an open collector pulse that can be sent to a, a secondary or a second batch controller and start that. 
there is also a um, a function on these where uh, through a remote signal, and again, you can remote hit a remote start. There's also a function in there. So if this was tied to a certain level uh, or other kind of device that would have, say, a contact closure, that would also initiate the batch. Uh, we do have a remote start, stop, and resume on the back of the unit, which can be uh, tied into an external device to actually initiate that batch automatically. All right. Um, and the last question so far was, would a Signet 3-8150 with a 515 paddle wheel work on a 2-inch pressurized gray, gray water discharge line with a pressure of less than 30 PSI? Assuming the gray water does not have particulate in it that could bind or cause abrasion, uh, as long as the pipe's full, it should be a, a good application. But I'd be very careful in uh, in looking at the consistency of what the water is like, so that uh, we don't accidentally, you know, find out that there's actually solids in there later down the road. I guess to that point, Ryan, uh, a lot of times when it comes to gray water and, and sewage and what have you, a lot of times insertion meters really don't function well in those in those applications. All right, we got some clarification. It's gray water from a septic tank. What do you think, David? I'm just a little I, weary on a wheel in a in gray water. I, you know, I would I, think as long as, you know, again, it all depends on the velocity. You know, for one, the paddle wheel does require at least one foot per second, which at 30 PSI in pressure, I would imagine there's probably something pushing that water. It's not a gravity feed. So my first inclination would be there's a potential for solids that may not be filtered out, which I would stay away from. Or if there's any kind of, I guess another thing to look at is if the line itself, if they notice any kind of buildup in the line. Also imagine that same buildup could occur on the paddle wheel and could foul it. Um, if there's power, then worst case situation, you can always you know, put in a, a, a mag meter uh, to you know, basically save the installation. But uh, yeah, I, I think it would be a, a, a closer look at the material coming out of the line, just to confirm there's no solids. I mean, it, it's worth a shot with a paddle wheel, but ultimately we've been more successful with mag meters in these applications with uh, like the 2551 insertion mag. And one, one thing I do want to interject uh, where, where Jeff was kind of talking about the uh, insertion of the paddle wheels. Uh, in some installations, uh, customers will opt for a paddle wheel because it's a less expensive route to go. Uh, in which case they get put in and they put in a 12 o'clock position. When they opt for a mag down the road, because sometimes paddle wheels aren't necessarily the fix and they don't work out, uh, the good news is we can use the same installation fitting. Uh, if there's power available, of course, and it, it's kind of a no-brainer. It's very similar wiring and you use the same instrument readouts. The, the thing you want to be careful of, and this is where you're going back to the paddle wheel installation, it's good practice not to mount at a 12 o'clock position uh, in fact, uh, in our newer literature, we don't show the 12 o'clock as an option uh, for that same reason, so that if 515 or 2536 was installed, and, and now we opt for a 2551 mag meter, we, we don't have to now worry about the, the issue of having error and trained at the top of the pipe, creating erratic readings out of the, uh, say, newly installed 2551. the deal thanks thanks david um uh, all right on that same gray water application uh they kevin asked there will be fine solids possibly debris what mag meter option is recommended uh that would probably be the 2551 if they want to read out it would be the uh po-11 uh so gives you a frequency or an s3l uh user optional and uh, the materials of construction, you know, they're, they're uh, 
stainless steel, uh, FKM O-rings, and a uh, polypro body. So that, that should be fine for that type of holdup. Uh, if there's fine particulates, things like that, I can tell you right now, I wouldn't go with a paddle wheel. All right. Um, that's all the questions we have that have uh, come in. So thank okay. you everyone for uh, attending this. Uh, Jeff, Dave, thank you so much for the presentation. Uh, right, well, thanks for the opportunity. We appreciate it. Anyone needs more information on a specific application, please reach out to your local uh, Gilson rep, and they'll work with you to uh, get you the correct device and pricing and lead time and all that. Um, uh, with that being said, uh, everyone have a great day and stay safe out there. Thank you.